am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on inverse trigonometric functions. Now this is a very difficult topic which is least understood at high school level. Many times you get questions related to this topic in competitive exams. My series will help all the students to understand the basic concept. I'm going to begin from the very beginning. In my video, you'll find a visual presentation which will show you what exactly inverse trigonometric functions are. Why do we restrict their domain or range? And how do we work with them? And then we will have about eight to 10 questions on each topic to understand all the related concepts. Enjoy the video. This series is for the beginners who want to learn from the basic concepts and get into solving some difficult questions. All trigonometric functions are periodic and therefore we need to restrict their domain to find the inverse. Let us first analyze the sine function. You see a graph of sine function. Now the inverse of this will not be a function simply because if there is a horizontal line then it is going to cross at more than one point and therefore in the inverse vertical line will fail the test. So what we can do here is restrict our domain to a portion which could give us the complete range but still avoid horizontal line test failure. You get the idea. So what we can do is we can restrict the domain from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. In that case, we have a trigonometric sinusoidal wave which is from minus 1 to plus 1. It is always increasing. And in this particular domain, as you can see, the horizontal line test passes. Since we are only taking a part of this wave. But it does represent the sine function. Perfect. So that's the whole idea. To get the inverse of sine function, we will restrict the domain from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. And to get the inverse, what are we going to do? Well, to get the inverse, we are going to flip the coordinate points and reflect the curve on the line y equals to x. So the minimum value which you can see is minus pi by 2 minus 1 and the maximum is at pi by 2 value being 1. If we flip it then we get our inverse function which is shown in blue in this particular case. You can match the coordinate points also. Does it make sense? So let me recap what we have learned here. Sine is a periodic function which fails the horizontal line test and therefore the inverse of the sine is not a function. To make it a function, we can restrict the domain from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and then the inverse will be a function also as you can see. The blue graph shown here in the interval from minus 1 to plus 1 will always be increasing from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and that's what we say inverse of a sine function. You get the idea. So when you 
calculate the value of sine theta, you get a real number between plus and minus 1. And when you do the inverse, then plus and minus 1 becomes the domain and the range goes to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 as shown here. And this is possible only when you restrict to a portion as shown here. So I hope with this concept absolutely clear, we can now take some questions based on inverse of sine function. I hope the video was interesting and useful. We have shown you what is the graph of sine function, how do we restrict its domain between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 to get the inverse as a function. Now based on that, we will have a few questions. Now we will consolidate all our learnings and take up examples which will give you foundation to understand inverse sine functions and excel in solving problems. What we saw in the video is that sine function is a periodic function and to get the inverse as a function, we need to restrict its domain. So the domain is restricted from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 as shown here. And in this restriction of the domain, we find that the range is from minus 1 to plus 1. When I say restricting the domain to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, we mean we're looking for solutions in quadrant 4 or quadrant 1 for the function y equals to sine x. Now, when you restrict the domain, the range, as I said, is now from minus 1 to 1 for the function sine x. Restricting domain and the codomain makes sine as 1 to 1 onto function and therefore the inverse of sine function is also a function. So you can now write this as y equals to sine inverse x. So what is the domain and range of sine inverse x? Well, it switches, correct? So you see that the domain now becomes from minus 1 to 1 and the range becomes minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. The graph of inverse function is shown in red here. The coordinate points being from minus 1 minus pi by 2 to 1 pi by 2. So the maximum value which a sine inverse function can take is pi by 2. Let us relate sine and its inverse with some coordinate points. To find the inverse, you know, you swap x and y values, right? So the concept is to find inverse. If x, y is on the function f of x, in that case, on the inverse of the function, we will swap these points coordinates to y, x. So I've listed all the values here, which are of our prime interest. We're looking into the quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So sine x, starting from quadrant 4, minimum could be minus pi by 2 minus 1. And then 3 pi by 3, it will give you minus square root 3 by 2 and so on. For 0, it is 0. To get these values, we will actually look into the special triangles and they can help us remember these values also. The important thing which I want to note here is if you compare the values for sine x and sine inverse x, then basically the x and y values swap, as you can see, for each one of them. So that helps you to understand 
how you can actually graph inverse of a sine function very easily just by swapping the coordinate points. That is the result when you reflect it on a line, which is y equals to x, right? In coordinate 1, all the values are positive, and you can see that they also swap to give you the exact value for the inverse of the sine function. You must have noticed that sine inverse is always increasing in quadrant 4 to quadrant 1, right? So the function is kind of like this, right? Where these two critical points are at minus, as you can see, minus 1, minus pi by 2, right? So minus 1, minus pi by 2 to 1 pi by 2. So the output of inverse is always the angle and we are taking it in radians in our video. And the input is a real number between plus and minus 1. Now based on this, let us have some questions. We'll first discuss how do we solve these questions and then I'm going to provide you with complete solution. Example 1 is find the principal value of sine inverse of square root 2 over 2. Part B is sine inverse of minus half and C is sine inverse of pi by 2. Let us see how do we solve these questions. Well, this value square root 2 over 2 reminds us of a special triangle which is pi by 4 triangle, correct? So in pi by 4 triangle, we get the value square root 2 over 2 for sine being pi by 4. And therefore, we can write this answer of sine inverse of square root 2 over 2 as equal to pi by 4. Remember, the output of a sine inverse will be the angle in radians. As far as sine inverse of minus half is concerned, when we say minus half, in that case, we are looking for an angle which will be in quadrant 4 and we are seeing it going clockwise. Sine value is half for which angle? Look at a special triangle which is pi by 3, pi by 6, pi by 2 triangle and sine value is half when the angle is pi by 6. Right. So in this particular case, since we are in quadrant 4, the angle will be minus pi by 6. Is that clear to you? And therefore, we get the answer here as minus pi by 6. It is as simple as that. What we need to do is always provide the solution in the region where the value is between minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. And you know the domain? The domain is from minus 1 to 1. So if the values in the domain are between minus 1 to 1, only then you will get an output. Now here we have sine inverse pi by 2. Well, pi by 2, 3.14 divided by 2 is greater than 1, right? So since pi by 2 is greater than 1, it has no solution. Is that clear to you? Here is example 2. You need to evaluate the expression sine of sine inverse square root 3 over 2. Part B is sine inverse of cos of sine inverse minus square root 3 over 2. So you could have nested functions as shown here. Let us see how do we solve such questions. The idea here is to work from inside out right so that is the strategy we will work from inside out so evaluate the inside function so we have here sine of and what is sine inverse of square root 3 over 2 look at this special triangle and get the result so sine of square root 3 over 2 means we are looking at pi by 3 so this is pi by 3 is that clear to you 
Now, what is sine of pi by 3? Sine of pi by 3 will return you the exact value from where we started. So, we do get square root 3 over 2. Now, that is important to understand. We are doing sine and sine inverse. So, we have to get the same value provided we are in the right domain. Do you see that? So, as you know, f of f inverse of x is basically equal to x. And that is what we got in part A. Now, let us do part B. We have incorporated cosine in between. So, let's work from inside out. We have sine inverse of cos of what is sine inverse of minus square root 3 by 2. So, that will be square root 3 by 2 minus will give us minus pi by 3. So, we'll find cos of minus pi by 3. Does make sense to you. Now, this is equal to sine inverse of we know cos is an even function. So, cos pi by 3 and cos minus pi by 3 are exactly the same. So, for cos pi by 3, we get the answer as half. So, now we have to look for sine inverse of half. Sine inverse of half can be seen from this particular triangle is pi by 6 and therefore, we get this answer as pi by 6. So, I hope the steps are simple enough to understand. So, we will be complicating the problems as we move along, taking test questions at the end. So, here is the quick solution of what we just did. Have a good look at it and see how it should be performed in any test. So, these are the steps involved as we discussed. Now, let us look into question 3. Question 3 is, if arc sin k equals to alpha, where k is between 0 to 1 and alpha is in radians, find in terms of a the first two positive values of x satisfying the equation sin x equals to k. A bit tricky problem. I'd like you to read it once again and figure out the solution. It says if arc sine, so arc sine and sine inverse is one and the same thing. So arc sine can be written as if sine inverse of k is equal to a, basically, or alpha. Basically, it means that sine of alpha equals to k, right? I go right like this. Both are same things. Correct. So arc sine means sine inverse, where k is between 0 to 1. So k value is 0 to 1, that means we are actually working in quadrant 1, right? So, when I say k is between 0 to 1, in that case, we are in quadrant 1, correct? And alpha is in radians. Find in terms of alpha, the first two positive values of x satisfying the equation sin x equal to k. So, sin x equals to k. We know k is equal to what? Well, sin x equals to k, k equals to sin alpha really means that we have x as equal to alpha. So, that is our first answer, correct? Now, the question says that we need to find in radians, in terms of alpha, the first two positive values. So, positive values for sin. Now, if you look at the cost rule, right? You remember that. We know sine is positive in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 2. And therefore, we get our solution, which is if we have alpha here, then the other positive value is 180 minus alpha. Is that clear to you? In degrees, however, we are working in radians and therefore, we'll write this as pi minus alpha. Clear? Okay. So, let me write this here as pi minus alpha. So, we have the x value as alpha and the other value as pi minus alpha. So, that becomes the second value for this particular case. I hope you have understood the concept. Here is how you should be writing this in your test paper. So, sine function is positive in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 4, 
and therefore we are expecting the second value to be in quadrant 4. If alpha is the first value, in that case the second will be pi minus alpha, correct? This angle is also alpha, the related acute angle. You get the concept. And that is how we should be doing it. Now, this is a very important question to understand how do we derive other principal values from the given condition. Here is question number four. <clears throat> given arc sine alpha, arc sine x equals to alpha, where alpha is between 0 to pi by 2. That means, again, we are working in quadrant 1, correct? 0 to pi by 2, find range of x, that is part A, and part B is find expression for cos alpha in terms of x. How are you going to solve this? Well, we have arc of sine x equals to alpha, and alpha is between 0 to pi by 2. We need to find the range of x. So what is x equals to? Well, x is equal to sine alpha. And in quadrant 1, sine is always positive, right? So in quadrant 1, which is from 0 to pi by 2, we know the value actually changes from 0 to 1, correct? So the range of x will be what? Range of x will be the values of sine alpha, and these values will be from 0 to 1. Is it okay? So that is how we are going to do it. Since in the inequality, 0 and pi by 2 is not included, I have also not included them in my solution. The second part of this is, find the expression for cos alpha in terms of x. Now this could be done in different ways. One approach is that, you know, sine square alpha plus cos square alpha is 1. You could use this approach. So let me start with that. So we have sine square alpha plus cos square alpha equals to 1. And so we could write cos square alpha equals to 1 minus sine square alpha. Or we can say cos alpha equals to plus minus square root of 1 minus sine square alpha. So we know sine alpha is x. So we can substitute this value. And we can say this is equal to plus minus square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, should we take plus or minus or both? Well, we are working in quadrant 1, correct? Since we are working in quadrant 1, we know the cost value is positive, And therefore, we are going to take only the positive value. Is that clear to you? So therefore, cos alpha is basically equal to square root of 1 minus x square in the given domain, which is from 0 to pi by 2. Clear? So this is one way of doing it. However, I prefer another approach. And my approach is, let us look at sine alpha is x. What does that mean? Right? So I'm just sketching a triangle here. And we're saying that if this is angle alpha, then sine alpha is equal to x means opposite side being x and the hypotenuse being 1. In that case, what is the base? Well, the base is square root of hypotenuse square minus x square. You get the idea. So from here directly, we get cos alpha equals to square root of 1 minus x square. Do you see that? So this approach using a triangle is an excellent approach. So that becomes our strategy to solve these questions. Let me call this as our strategy one, very critical to solve such questions. I hope you appreciate this. Now, let's look into the solution. We have approached in the same way as I just showed you, that is our strategy one, correct? Okay, so first part, finding the range, was very clear. You can see what the range is. It ranges from 0 to 1 as shown here and as described earlier. However, it is very important to have a second look at part B. 
sine alpha is x it really means in a right angle triangle if the angle is alpha i'm saying a in this case written here let's say this angle is alpha in that case opposite side will be x and hypotenuse will be one applying the pythagorean theorem we get c a as one square minus x square square root and cos alpha will be the adjacent side c a divided by one which is 1 minus x squared, and that is how we can immediately get our answer. Got it, correct. In this example, you also saw that if we know sine inverse of x, then how do we find the value of cos inverse of x? You could use any of the two methods discussed, that is to say, the trigonometric ratio which is sine square x plus cos square x equals to 1 helps you find it or you could use the triangle. The triangle method is versatile and it can be used very easily for any trigonometric function whenever we are talking about its inverse. Now here is a related question just uh, for you to practice on the same concept. Now here we need to evaluate each of the following. So what we have is cos of sine inverse 3 over 5. How do we do this? And then part B is tan of C sine inverse 3 over 5. So as I said, we can make a triangle, correct? So if I'm saying that sine is 3 over 5, basically what we are trying to say here, while this diagram is not to the scale, let us say this is our angle and sine is 3 over 5. Let's call this as angle alpha, right? In that case, sine 3 over 5 is angle alpha. How do you find this side? Well, it is 5 square minus 3 square square root. And clear, this is equal to 4. And now we can say what is cos of sine inverse of 3 over 5? Well, that is equal to cos of alpha as shown in this particular diagram and from the triangle we can say it is 4 over 5 that is the value of cos of sine inverse 3 over 5 do you see making a triangle makes things very very simple as you've seen here we can again find out the value of tan of uh, sine inverse 3 by 5 using the same principle right so this is this is equal to tan of angle alpha and from here it is the ratio of opposite to adjacent side so we get our answer as 3 over 4 perfect correct here is the solution for you that is how you can neatly write down the answer but i hope again the concept is absolutely clear feel free to share your views and also write your comments as we are going forward. We have eight questions to answer and now we are gearing up for slightly more difficult type of questions. Question number six is graph inverse function and uh, we need to sketch graph of the function which is pi by 2 plus 2 arc sine x. So let me rewrite this function. It is f of x equals to pi by 2 plus 2 times arc sine x how will you sketch this function well what you notice here is there are only two transformations and one of the translations is uh, we have a vertical stretch by a factor of of 2 and the second one is vertical translation, correct? Pi by 2 units up. So these are the two transformation which are taking place on the graph of arc sine x. So you can actually find the coordinate points if the coordinate points are x, y in the original graph in that case from the parent function we can apply the transformation x remains x right the y values get multiplied by 2 and then we add pi by 2 correct so we get 
a graph which is stretched and then we have uh, the function so you can make a table of values using this and three critical points to look are what well minus pi by two one right well for sine inverse it will be sorry for sine inverse it is going to be minus one minus pi by two and then it will be zero zero and then we have one pi by two so these are the values for sine inverse x and now you can calculate the values for the function with this transformation get these points plot them and definitely you get a curve which is extended and may look like this the exact solution with the graph is shown here so that is how you need to do it so as i said we have the critical values as minus 1 minus pi by 2 0 0 and 1 pi by 2 to this we are applying the transformation and the transformation is that the x values remain same however the y values get multiplied by 2 right multiplied by 2 this minus 1 that's why we have minus here by pi by 2 and then you add pi by 2 so the transformation basically is that as shown earlier that if the points are x y in the original in that case x remains as x however the value of y gets multiplied by 2 and then you add pi by 2 correct and get the new values so when you multiply and get you get the first coordinate which is the minimum as minus 1 minus pi by 2 it kind of remains same right so it is exactly the same point we got the same value okay so when you substitute 0 in that case it moves up by pi by 2 so that is the point pi by 2 as a y intercept now and when you substitute 1 pi by 2 pi by 2 getting multiplied by 2 gives you pi and pi plus pi by 2 gives you 3 pi by 2 so we have this point as 3 pi by 2 correct that being the original graph graph of sine inverse x and that is the function which is transformed as shown here so i hope that helps so two transformations vertical stretch by a factor of two and then translate vertically pi by two shows you the graph in green from orange so i hope this is absolutely clear finding domain is a very challenging process however here is a very easy method to find it you understand the inverse of sine function has a domain between minus 1 and 1 and therefore the argument has to be placed in the center and the inequality is to be solved between minus 1 and 1 now let's look into the second last question which is find the domain of the function now, domain is very critical we restricted the domain right you remember we restricted the domain to plus and minus one correct so remember this part it is going to help us to find domain of any inverse function for sine correct so we need to find the domain for sine inverse of 2x minus 5 now this argument should be between plus and minus one so basically we have to solve the inequality correct we have to solve inequality so that is the concept to with which we are going to approach so we have 2x minus 1 minus 5 it has to be between plus and minus 1 both included solving this means let's add 5 first so we have minus 1 plus 5 less than equal to 2x and here also minus 5 plus 5 so we are going to add 5 in all the cases and then we are going to divide by 2 right so we get here 4 2x and then this is 6 and now we are going to divide by 2 each one of them getting the result that x is in between 2 and 3 does make sense so that is how we are going to find the domain of the transform function 
perfect here is the solution for you which is similar steps written nicely for you to see and if in the test it is asked you may write like this solve the inequality get your solution i hope it's absolutely clear here is the last question which is given x y z belongs to minus 1 and 1 such that sine inverse of x plus sine inverse of y plus sine inverse of z is 3 pi by 2 find the value of x to the power of 2020 plus y to the power of 2021 plus z to the power of 2022 now this is uh, a question which is seen in competitive exams now this is the year 2021 going i thought let me put these three years right there how are you going to solve this particular question let's look into this we have the equation which is sine inverse of x plus sine inverse of y plus sine inverse of z equals to 3 pi by 2 okay um, as far as sine inverse goes we know that its uh, range is from what maximum is 3 is pi by 2 right so we know for sine inverse of x the maximum value is pi by 2 correct similarly for sine inverse of y also the maximum is pi by 2 and for sine inverse of z it is maximum pi by 2 so clearly from here if i am going to get 3 pi by 2 then each should be pi by 2 correct so that really implies that sine inverse of x is equal to pi by 2 and that is possible only if x is equal to 1 right so similar reasoning gives us y equals to 1 and z equals to 1 and now we can find the value of the expression x to the power of anything plus y to the power of anything plus z to the power of anything should be what the base is 1 for us right so 1 to the power of 2020 plus 1 to the power of 2021 plus 1 to the power of 2022 should be equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 and that is 3 so that is how we could solve this very interesting question so here is the solution for you as we just did here i like you to closely look at the solution understand the steps so in the given domain which is minus 1 to 1 we know the maximum value will be at 1 which will be pi by 2 right so therefore we have seen that some of this when equal to 3 pi by 2 really means each one of them should be pi by 2 only then you can get it and that is when x y z all are equal to 1 and so 1 to the power of anything plus 1 to the power of anything plus 1 to the power of anything will be 3 and therefore we have the solution that the answer is 3. Many questions look challenging like this one sine inverse of x plus sine inverse of y plus sine inverse of z equals to 3 pi by 2. Well did you see how simple the solution was? Many times such questions appear in competitive exams. In the next video, we'll take up cosine and tangent functions and examples in those will involve other trigonometric functions also. Let us summarize what we have learned in today's lesson. Sine function, which you can see is periodic, has been restricted in the domain from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Within this domain, the value for sine inverse can be from minus 1 to plus 1. The function is always increasing. So the characteristics for sine inverse function summarized here are that the domain is from minus 1 to 1, range is from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. It is always increasing in its domain. The minimum value is minus pi by 2 at x equals to minus 1. Maximum value is pi by 2 at x equals to 1. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something about 
sine inverse x, the inverse of sinusoidal function. We will now take up inverse of cosine and tangent and with them we will have many examples where all will be involved. We will have functions within functions and some difficult questions from previous test papers. Keep watching my series and I hope that helps. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.